In this video, we are going to look at building a site structure like this with Foundation's grid system. Now, Foundation is a CSS framework, but I often take the grid system out of it for personal projects just because I really like it. And I'm going to show you how you can include the bare bones of Foundation. This does include some other elements as well, like typography. Um, and visibility classes, for example. But we're going to basically take foundation, put it in a page, and build something like this. And this is actually responsive as well. So if I pull this in, uh, you can see that I have, if we just pull this away, you can see that they've got the left and the right here sort of stay in this position until they get to there, they drop down. Whereas this one and two here stays, and this three drops down. The article obviously responds in nicely because it's just paragraphs with text. And then we've got all of these down here as well. But we'll be looking at how you can um, essentially customize this so you can do whatever you want with it. It's extremely flexible and uh, it's really nice to work with and very easy to work with once you have used it. So let's take a look at the code now. We're also going to look at what we need to download uh, in terms of foundation to get started. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need to do is actually download foundation. So if you hit the download foundation button uh, over on foundation.zerb.com, we're going to choose the essential package. So this is a light, a simple lighter version that includes typography, the grid, which is what we're going to focus on, buttons, reveal and interchange, which are JavaScript. Uh, we're not going to be including that. So essentially, all we're getting is the typography, the grid, and the buttons. Um, and you may as well, you may well find these useful. If you are going to find other elements of the Foundation Framework useful, then just download everything. But please be aware that you are adding more and more CSS and potentially JavaScript and uh, this will have an impact on page performance, particularly on lower bandwidth users. So we're going to download the essential package and we're going to get started. In my text editor, I've included normalize.css, I've included foundation.min.css, the minified version of the framework, and I've also included a custom style sheet as well. Now, this uh, here is basically for testing, uh, so I wouldn't recommend doing this at all. Basically, what I'm saying is I want all elements except the body and the HTML element to have a box sizing of border box, and I want the border to be one pixel dash. That's basically what you saw earlier when you saw dash lines around everything. And the reason I'm doing this is because it makes it much easier to teach how this works when you can actually see the elements you're dealing with. And if you're a beginner, I would highly recommend that you do this. Now, the columns I've also set to have a minimum height of 100 pixels. This is just so they don't look flat and it just gives a, a sort of wider or a longer structure to the page just so we can sort of again for testing reasons just see what we're doing better um, but I have these styles set here which we're going to be marking up soon uh, and these will uh, be relevant when we come to them so I will refer back to them so the index page then a basic document markup the relevant style sheets linked in uh, the rest of what you would normally expect from a document so let's get started on building the header of the website so we're going to create a header element here, um, an HTML5 element, and we're going to give this an ID just so I can specifically refer to it. So site header, just because header can exist in articles or in other elements. So we don't want to confuse things. Now we're going to utilize foundations row and then the columns that we want to define. And we're going to look at a very basic example of columns here. And I'll talk a little bit about how a sort of column system works. And obviously, this is not hacky, but CSS doesn't deal with layouts well, at least not, not at the time of recording. Uh, support for things like Flexbox is not widely implemented. So I'm going to create a, uh, a div with a class of row, basically. So a div with a class of row, this basically means a row of columns. You know, a table has a row of columns. It's a it's a well known concept. We understand what this means. Now, in a grid system, typically you have twelve columns. You don't have to. You can have any amount of columns. But columns are basically, um, if you think about them as, let me just bring up my browser, invisible lines down the page that basically separate uh, the entire page out into twelve columns. Now, twelve is a nice number because six goes into twelve. 4 goes into 12, 2 goes into 12, so you can 
you can sort of chop your uh, page up if you like into nice sections and if you have say uh, something that you want to be a sidebar you could have that as a three column and then you could have the rest of the content as a nine which obviously adds up to 12 and we will be doing this in this video so I'm going to create a um, a uh, div with a class of large 12 columns so large hyphen 12 columns and this is telling foundation or utilizing what has foundation uh, what foundation gives us that we want a 12 column uh, element essentially so i'm going to say site header you can put anything in there so let's take a look at what this uh, what this gives us there we go so let's inspect this and we'll take a look so the row here um, let's take a look at some of the uh, properties of this. We've got a width of 100%, a margin left of auto and a margin right of auto, which basically centers an element. And then we've got a maximum width of 62.5M. So this isn't actually a 100% element. You can see that by the orange on the outside. The blue is where this sits. And you can change this. I'm going to leave it by default uh, for now. Now inside of this, we've got this large 12 columns. Uh, again, we've got our min height on there, which we applied to it. But uh, you can see if we just scroll down for some of the properties, we've got a little bit of padding on the left, a little bit of pad padding on the right, and this floats left. Now that's really important because when we start to use a six and a six by, by the side of each other, that would essentially be half of these. So if we had a six column, it would be here. If we had a six column, it would be here then that would need to be floated otherwise they would sit underneath each other naturally and because divs are block level elements they would uh, span 100% of the width of whatever the parent container is. So we've got our site header that's going to remain as a large 12 columns. In actual fact this whole thing doesn't really need to be here but what we want to do is we want to sort of constrain everything within a row and that's what I'm going to be doing uh, in the in the rest of the video so we've got our site header styles and they are here we've got a margin bottom of 20 pixels and a padding of 20 pixels as well if I had to get rid of that you would see the following so that's why I've done so just it pulls it out a little bit um, but now what we're going to do is focus on the rest of the page structure so we're going to create a wrapper so this wrapper is going to be nothing more than something that contains the entire page and that doesn't include the footer uh, we'll be creating the footer outside of this wrapper as well and you can see I've got a star here of a margin bottom of 20 these don't really matter you can get rid of these and obviously we're using these for testing so inside of the wrapper I want to create um, as I've just described a six and a six side by side so I want a six column a six column obviously six and six is 12 we're using a 12 column grid so it makes sense so we'll go ahead and create a, um, a class of a div with a class of row as we did before but this time what we're going to do inside here is we're going to create a large six columns like so and then we'll do that twice so we've got two six columns so if I was to say left here and in here I was to say right we can see that that gives us the following. So we've got a six and a six adding up to 12. Very, very basic here. So when I pull this in, you'll notice that as soon as it sort of gets to the point where it breaks, this break point here, this is actually collapsing down. You might not want this. These might have images in. You'll, you might have a sort of low resolu resolution image in here. And that's going to stretch that image. And really, things aren't going to look very nice. So what we can actually do is we can apply additional classes here. Large, I haven't even explained, basically means on a large screen or a large viewport, this is going to be six columns. However, what happens if on a medium, we also want that to be six columns? Well, we can define as many of these as we want, so medium six. We can do small, extra small as well. So let's take a look at what happens now that we've applied these medium, if we just pull this down, medium six and medium six. That's going to say well as well as on a large layout, when I hit this break point, there we go. I want that to stay as a six and you can see that staying as a six. As we pull this in though, we can see we get to a break point just about here where that then goes down to um, just as it normally would as normal behavior. 
So that's a little bit of theory about sort of how a grid system generally works. Like I said, you don't have to have a 12 column, um, but in this case we, we do. Okay, so down here then, I want to create a, uh, basically, well, I can describe inside of here. I want to have one, two, three. So you probably already guessed what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna create a row. I'm then gonna create a large four column div, like so. And I'm gonna duplicate that down twice like this. So we have one, we have two here, and we have three. So let's take a look at how this looks. It looks as we'd expect. We've got one, two, and three. But obviously now we've got the same problem. When we pull this in, it's just basically you know, coming down like this. We might not want that. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna look at a slightly different technique, and we're gonna have one and two stay as six, but then we're gonna have three just act as normal, act as it normally would. Um, so let's take a look at how we might be do, how we might do this. Well, on a medium screen, let's say we uh, or a medium viewport rather, let's say we want these to be fours, and we also want this third one to be four as well. So we can do that, and we get the same result as we did did above. It's a sensible size to keep them like this because there's not much different in the widths. But now when this comes down to a small, we want one and two to be six columns. So all we do is we say small six and small six. You can imagine that applying this to your own project is going to give you loads of flexibility in terms of how you lay your pages out. It really, once you've learned the theory of, a col of columns, it doesn't take too much to just switch things around exactly how you need them. So now let's take a look at maybe a slightly more complicated example. It's not much more complicated, but it's more applicable to perhaps a website that you're building. We're gonna have down here a sidebar, and then we're gonna have a main content area. And then within that main content area, we're gonna have another row at the bottom, which is gonna house things like related content or additional news or whatever you wanna call it. So as you'd expect down here, we're gonna have a row. Within this, what we're gonna have this time is we, we sort of judge how big we want the, the column to be. Um, it might take a little while for you to get used to this, but I'm basically gonna have an aside element and this is going to be a large three, like so. So in here, this is gonna be our sidebar. Now down here, we're gonna have maybe a large nine, and that's gonna be our article area. We'll add our article and some dummy data in there in a moment. So we've basically said, well, I think that a three is going to be about the right size for my sidebar. So when I refresh, it looks like this probably is about the right size for my sidebar. So inside of here, let's just create this article and let's maybe create a H3 and let's write in here an article. Doesn't really matter what we do. Oops. So now what we can do is just generate some text maybe and we'll have maybe three of them and that should be it. So that should give us enough room to play around. Cool, so we've got three paragraphs of lorem ipsum. Let's now down here, as I mentioned earlier, create another row. So we're basically nesting rows now. And you can nest rows really as far as you want. It doesn't really matter. But obviously be wary that the more you nest, the more ridiculous your layout is gonna get because it's just gonna get too nitty and gritty. The websites that you're building is probably too complicated if you need to nest maybe more than three levels. So let's create this row down here then. And let's go ahead and create a large six. And next to that, we'll have another large six. And again with columns, there we go. So in here then, we'd have something like related. And then down here, maybe we would have something like latest news. It can be really anything, it doesn't matter. And you can see how easy that is. It's just nested the content in. Now notice that although when we've created this article, the grid lines the text up right to the edge. When we come down, even though this container is slightly bigger, it's still lining up the text for us. So everything really just looks really nice and lined up. It's, it's you know, it just works off, off of um, the shelf with foundation. 
So let's focus now on the footer, which really doesn't have much more than we've already dealt with. So we created this wrapper here, remember? So let's just uh, collapse that. And down here, we'll create a footer. And let's give this an ID of site footer, even though we haven't applied any particular styles to it. Let's create our row as normal, and let's create a large six maybe. And next to that, let's create a large six as well. And you can maybe just as a little example, you can go off and create something a little bit more complicated. You might have a large six, but then you might have a nested row in there and you might have maybe a couple of elements in that. In fact, we can do that now. So we, we would essentially create a new row and we would create maybe another large six and obviously duplicate that down. So we can say left, right. So we would get something like the following. There we go, we've got a left footer. You can maybe put a little bit about the website in there. And then here you might have two columns of uh, links perhaps. So when we pull this in, we haven't actually looked at this yet, but the article, as I mentioned at the start of the video, responds nicely, it's just text, related, latest news, left footer, left and right. And we might want these left and right to stay as normal. So as we've already learned, we would say medium uh, six, and small six and we would do exactly the same thing down here so we'd say medium six and small six and there we go looking good so if you want to use foundation in your project there's nothing wrong with just downloading the bare bones of it like we've said just download the essential you could even go into the non minified source code and rip out the buttons if you didn't need them um, I suggest you keep the typography but that's just uh, really um, preference. So we've created a very basic layout pretty quickly and you can see how good this would be for things like rapid prototyping but this code is perfectly acceptable to use in production. While we're waiting for things like Flexbox to become well supported these do add weight to your page yes but you can see the benefit of using them for your users. We have a fully responsive website here it's going to look great on other devices and it was very very quick to do. So that's just an introduction to Foundation's grid system. This, I guess, applies to all grid systems, but personally, I find that Foundation's works really, really well. I like the syntax. It's fast, and uh, we get really good results with it.